Hi, I am Movie Man. I'm an octopus who reviews movies, and today's review is going to be on. So, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 today, and um, this was one of my most highly anticipated movies of the year, as you guys may remember, and um, in the time that has passed, um, I, uh, I have still been very hyped for this movie, and especially recently, um, I have become very hyped for this movie. Um, I know... Um, Everybody's been saying that, like, the MCU has been kind of on a decline lately in terms of quality, but, um, I know I've enjoyed some of the recent MCU films and shows, but, I mean, yeah, I've, well, most of them anyways, but, yeah, I've, yeah, I've definitely there. There, yeah, there has I feel like there kind of has been a bit of a decline in quality. Or I can, I just want to say, I can kind of see what everyone's been saying about the recent MCU projects and stuff. Um, and um, I was a little bit worried that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three would end up being the same fate that like it just kind of end up being another like disappointing entry in the MCU um and like um yeah they were kind of just ruined this film but um thankfully that did not happen I am glad to say that this movie managed to live up to the hype um and I think a great reason for that is because of James Gunn, the great director himself. Um, obviously, as you guys may remember, a few years back, James Gunn was actually fired from directing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 um, for reasons, but... Um, yeah, after pretty much everybody demanded he be brought back, uh, they brought him back anyways, and in my opinion, this was definitely for the best. Um, because, to be honest, I don't think anybody else could direct a Guardians of the Galaxy film as good as James could, honestly. Um... Like, I feel like if it, if it wasn't James Gunn directing this movie, and if it was just some other director, um, this would probably end up just being another bad entry in the MCU. But, thankfully, that was not the case. Um, definitely not the case at all. Um, so, um, anyways... Starting things off with this film, cinematography, um, it's very good, um, I think the, the cinematography in this movie is really, really good, um, obviously that's not really much of a surprise, but, um, uh, but I must, I must say though that the, the cinematography in this movie is, it is very, very good or something. Very good shots in this movie. Um, but even in some a few like transition shots that I thought were pretty good. Um, there's a pace in this film. Now, this this is actually quite long. Um, and well, I mean, like, um, I mean, it's it's an MCU film now. I know there were some M2 films there not so long ago that weren't very long, but um, this is a rather long one at 2 hours and 29 minutes. Um, 
and and I think this is actually the longest of the Guardians movies. Um, and yeah, I think you can kind of feel the runtime all right. With this movie, with this movie, you can definitely feel the runtime all right. But in my opinion, it, it suits very well, honestly, because you know it's, it's the with with this being the finale of the trilogy, it kind of was make sense to have this movie be a bit longer. Um, the sound and music in this movie, once again, just absolutely phenomenal. And the soundtrack in both the first movie and the second movie were both amazing. And yeah, it's safe to say, I think the soundtrack in this movie, once again, f very, very good. Um, then, um, then there's the editing in this movie, um, the editing in this film is very, very good, um, the way that these shots are all cropped together and everything is done very, very well, um, also another thing I would just like to mention is that the visual effects in this movie are absolutely outstanding like i've got to say um of all the mcu projects that have come out in the last two years actually and i think this one has probably been the best in terms of visual effects because I must say the visual effects in this movie are absolutely outstanding and I know that like everybody has complained about the recent MCU projects having like really bad CGI and stuff um but I'm, I'm just going to say right here and right now, that is not the case with this movie because, oh my gosh, the, the visual effects in this movie are absolutely outstanding. Like, I mean, it's kind of a shame that some of the other recent MCU projects haven't been able to have as good visual effects as this film has had. Now, I mean, to be fair, I, I know that there are reasons why the recent visual effects in Marvel films hasn't been that great, but, um, yeah, um, with that being said, though, just absolutely outstanding visual effects now the visual effects were brilliant in the first two movies as well and so that's not really much of a surprise but yeah just, just absolutely outstanding visual effects now for the characters um now i mean for me personally with the first Two films, the characters have always been like a very strong point of these films for me. And once again, the characters in this movie are brilliant. Um, like Star-Lord is once again great. Um, this, like, I mean, in this movie, we, we get to see like um, how he's been dealing with the fact that he lost Gamora since the events of Avengers Infinity War and well yeah I mean like I mean you you can you can definitely understand it all right. Um I once again he serves as a very good like leader to them and stuff. Um It was it was nice to see Gamora again in this film after her death in Avengers Infinity War and 
Well, I mean, I mean, I know technically this isn't the same version as it's from like a different timeline, but I mean, nonetheless, it is still Gamora, and I think once again she's very good. I think she definitely does, and she actually does get a lot better as the film goes on, especially and I I do like um what this movie does with her relationship with Star Lord and everything. I think. I think the way they conclude and stuff is done very well, honestly. Once again, Drax is very good. Um, he's he's still a badass, and he still has some funny lines of dialogue. Um, oh yeah, I think he's great. Um, he yeah, he does have a lot of great scenes. He's definitely a very great character, all right. Mantis was very good too. Um, I thought that like what well, she too had a lot of very good scenes in the movie. Um, there was some funny jokes involved her. Um, like and um, yeah, I thought I thought she definitely had some very good scenes. She fits up plot very well. She was very good. Nebula was really good in this movie. Um, this is probably the best film. Uh, oh, this is probably, I think Nebula's had her best in this movie. Because, like, I mean... Once again, she's, like, she's like this ruthless warrior and stuff. That's, like, doesn't... It's not really much of a comedy person. And, like... Like, she's actually very good in this movie. And, like... Not to mention, she's actually she's actually gotten some like upgrades in since we last saw her, and I gotta say it is actually superb. Now then we have the ghost himself, Groot. Now I know in this movie Groot's kind of kind of more in the background a bit, but. Nonetheless, Groot is very good, and, like, like, he even has, he gets, like, some new, like, he even gets him do some new things, like, with his body and stuff, and I love it. I think it's great. Then, then we have Rocket. Now, Rocket is a huge part of this movie. As you guys can guess, like, Rocket, he, he does play a huge role in this film. Because this movie, uh, it actually explores his past. Like, we actually get a lot of flashbacks from the movie. This film, it's kind of similar to Eternals. in Because, like, remember, because, like, in Eternals, um, there was a lot of flashbacks in the film, like... Where we got to see like events that happened before the main plot. And in Guardians of the Guys Volume 3 we get a lot of that as well. Um But these flashbacks are about Rocket's past and stuff. Um and like now I won't I won't say much. You've probably seen a tiny bit of it from the trailer, but like all I'll say is though like Oh my gosh, it is absolutely heartbreaking. Like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to warn myself. This part of the film is actually really sad. Like, I had a feeling it was going to be kind of a more emotional part of the story, but oh my god, it was actually really, really sad. And... It actually really made me view Rocket in a new light because I mean, I'm just gonna tell you guys after this after this part, you're definitely gonna you're actually gonna feel sorry so so sorry for Rocket after this like I'll show you it is horrible. Um. There's also Kraglin as well, and he's 
But he's pretty good too. Um, I think he does have some funny scenes in the movie. He's not in the film much, but I think he's very good from the scenes that he gets. Um, and there's also Cosmo, the space dog, who is like kind of sort of their new member. And I thought she was very good too. She also actually wasn't in this movie all that much, but I actually thought she was very good from the scenes that she got. Um, she was pretty funny, to be fair. First, some of the new car characters. Well, I mean, well, I mean, there's Ayesha. Well, okay, she's actually not a new character. I know she was in Volume 2, but we get to see some more of her in this movie. And, yeah, I actually think she's very good in this film. I actually like her a lot more than I did in Volume 2. I thought she was pretty good in Volume 2. And, but in this way, she's actually very good too. I, I like her a lot more in this film. Just actually have some very good scenes. Um, and then we have now this is a new car show. Her, her kind of her solo. I mean, yeah, I mean he is her son, all right. As a warlock. Yes, now as some of you who have read the comics will know, as a warlock, all right. And he makes his M two debut in this movie. In my opinion, as a warlock was really good um he's definitely very powerful he has some very good scenes will pull for just a good performance yeah overall i thought asm warlock was very good and then we have the villain of the movie the high evolutionary oh my gosh he has got to be one of the best MCU villains, like, in the past year. Like, one of the best MCU villains in a while, all right. Because, I mean, like, oh my god, the High Evolutionary is, like, such a great villain. In fact, in my opinion, of the three main villains in the Guaranteed movies, the High Evolutionary is the best one. Like, wow, the High Evolutionary was... Such a great villain. Um, like um. Compared to some of some other MCU villains that are trying to be a bit too sympathetic, like the High Evolutionary is not a sympathetic villain. Like not in the slightest. Like, like you actually hate the High Evolutionary for some of the stuff that he does in the movie. Like he is just straight up pure evil. And I actually love that. And I've got to say, fair play to his actor, Chuck Woody Iwuji. I deeply apologise if I pronounced that wrong, because he did a fantastic job playing, well, playing one of the most unsympathetic characters in some of the recent Marvel media. Oh my gosh, like... The High Evolutionary was just such, so like it was such, it was such a terrible, such a terrible person, and I just love, I just love him for that. He was a brilliant villain. Um. Then there is, the plot of this film. Uh this movie had a great plot. Like I mean. It continues, the way it continues from all the previous films, it's done very well. And as I said, it does really go a lot into Rocket's backstory. And again, that part of the film is just very depressing, as I mentioned. As for the film's narrative structure, like, I mean, I mean we have like the main plot of the Guardians wanting to protect Rocket and stuff. And like... We get a few subplots from some of the other characters and stuff, and I think each of them kind of have their own, like, moments to shine in the movie, but one major, again, the major subplot this film focuses on is Rocket and his past and stuff, and yeah, it can actually be heartbreaking to watch, again, as I mentioned. It, that this movie just... We continues on the other movies and 
just in general, all the plots are, it's just, the way it all comes together is just absolutely brilliant. I love this. So overall, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was amazing. It was a brilliant movie. It lived up to the hype. It's one of the, it's like, the, it's easily the best MCU movie since No Way Home. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. And it is a must watch film. It's one of the best movies of the year so far. You should absolutely go see it. Um, it was a great conclusion to the trilogy. And it was a great final movie for James Gunn. Because obviously he's not. This is James Gunn's last movie with Marvel. He after this one now he's. He's leaving Marvel for because I mean like he because he's the CEO of DC now and, um, I gotta say just thank thank you James Gunn for, for for call for a like, coming back directing this movie and, yeah just, I don't think any other director could have done it as well as James Gunn did because, like this was just one brilliant film. Yeah, so for James's final movie at Marvel, this was absolutely brilliant. Again, as I said, thank you, James, for for giving us these three brilliant movies, and I I I'm counting on you to make the DC, new DC universe brilliant, and you should be absolutely proud of yourself for this film in particular because this movie was extraordinary so with that i'm going to give guardians of the galaxy volume 3 a well-deserved 10 out of 10 so with that i'll see you guys next time and bye